All right, hello folks. This is the third lecture for bonding, and we have my assistant back. Hello, assistant. Hello. Hmm. Um, and today we are going to talk about Vesper theory and hybridization. Hey there, starfish. Um, so first of all, um, Vesper theory. You may notice one problem, which is that it's pronounced Vesper, but it's V-S-E-P-R. But um, I read somewhere that someone said, you know, it's pronounced Vesper, like Brett, like Brett Favre is pronounced Favre, um, which I thought was funny because it's Favre, folks. It's French. All right. Um, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory um, is what that stands for. And what it's saying is that um, when you've got uh, a central atom and it has some electron pairs, they could be lone pairs or bonding pairs, um, because the electrons are all negatively charged, they repel each other. Um, but these are the valence ones, by the way. So these are the valence shell electron pairs that repel. And this is the theory. So this is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So what happens is, for example, um, our central atom here is green, except for this one. Um, our central atoms being green, uh, in this case, if you have got two um, electron pairs valence shell electron pairs on the outside of this atom here, what they're going to do is they're going to repel each other in 3D space and get as far apart from one another as they can. So they end up going, ah, help, stay away. <laughs> so you end up having a 180 degree angle between them because they're staying as far apart from one another as possible. So when you have a central atom with two dudes, you end up with a linear shape and a 180 degree angle. Um, and you kind of just keep going with that and go, okay, well, what if you had three? What if you had four? What if you had four and one of them was a lone pair and three of them were real ones? And, like, and so there's this big old chart of shapes. I like shapes. So we're going to talk about all the shapes. Um, so linear is our first one with 180 degree angles. And it's actually important that you remember the angles. So the next one is, what if you had a central atom with three dudes around him? And by dudes, um, the actual term is effective pairs or electron domains. You should not use the word, I know, right? Um, it's basically like electron-y spots. Um, so if you have a central atom with three dudes around him, um, in 3D space, the best they can do to get away from each other is um, spread out in a little circle of three here, and that divides our 360 degrees into three chunks. So you kind of have this nice um, flat triangly thing, which is what they named it. They didn't name it flat tri triangly thing, but they did name it trigonal planar. Um, and your angles are 120 degrees uh, in between them. Um, then uh, after that, it's kind of cool. They say, okay, so you've got three dudes, but let's say one of them is a lone pair. Okay, well, they still repel each other um, maximally in 3D space, and they basically make a triangle shape because you've got down, down, and then up here, right? Um, but the thing about it is that the lone pairs are actually stronger repellers than the bonded things. Um, so the bent shape that you have here, this lone pair is pushing slightly harder down than these guys are pushing back on him, so this angle gets squished a bit. Um, so you end up with an angle between these two that is slightly less than 120 degrees. Um, um, and what you can see with this bent shape is that this is going to be a polar molecule, whereas the trigonal planar is going to be nonpolar because this one is nice and symmetrical. Um, and this one has definitely got a negative end up here with the lone pair and a more positive end down here with the little red dudes. Um, and the linear was also nonpolar. All right, so... Now we've got to consider all of the options with four dudes. Um, so the four dude option, you've got green ball and four red balls um, sticking out. And this ventures into 3D space. We've been in 2D space so far. Um, in 3D space, um, the fourth dude kind of sticks straight up um, and pushes these guys, these three, down a little bit. Um, until they're all equal and they kind of shuffle around until they're all equal. And it turns out that the angle between two of them is a hundred and Hmm. is 109.5 degrees when you have this particular shape. Um, and the name for this shape is a tetrahedron. And so this is a tetrahedral molecule. Um, and the reason for that is a lot of the names come from um, what you can do by drawing faces between the things. So you've got a triangle here 
and a triangle here and a triangle back here as well. Mirror, mirror, mirror. Um, and so you end up with a four faced triangle. Um, so that is a tetrahedron. Um, there you are, that's a tetrahedron. So this is a tetrahedral. And then you go, okay, well, what if one of them was a lone pair? Um, and so you go, okay, so you, this top guy will replace him with a lone pair of electrons here. Um, and if you remember, again, he pushes down a little bit harder. Um, so these angles between the atoms end up being slightly less than 109.5. Um, and you end up with it being polar. This is a polar uh, shape. And then the question is, well, what's the name of the shape? They name the shapes based uh, uh, ignoring the lone pairs. So the, the lone pairs don't participate in the shape name. So you've got this, which is a triangle and a triangle and a triangle. And that's a pyramid with the base of the pyramid being a triangle shape. So this is a triangular pyramid, also known as trigonal pyramidal. Um, and I've just kind of scribbled all over that guy and he's got <laughs> ears. Hey, give me that ear yep. back. Give it, oh. ear. <laughs> too bad, you're a starfish. Um, all right, and then, so then you can go, well, what if, what if, what if there were two lone pairs? Like this. Um, and you may recognize this one, this is water. Um, two lone pairs and this guy. And the shape again is bent, but it's more bendy than the previous bent because you have two lone pairs pushing down and so they squish pretty hard. And so you end up again with an angle that's less than 109.5 degrees. And in the case of water, you should know this one, it's 104.5 degrees. That's how much less that angle is. Isn't that exciting? Haven't you always wanted to know the exact angle of the hydrogens on the water? Desperately. Yep, me too. Um, and then you can also say, well, what if you had three lone pairs? Well, if you had three lone pairs, you'd have the green guy bonded to the red guy and dot, 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 and you're linear again, right? Um, it's just a really fancy, extremely polar linear. <laughs> um, all right, so now all the dudes based off of five. So your main five dude is green dude with five, five fellas. And what's interesting is that you end up again with the, the trigonal piece around the center. This is the equatorial plane. I finally found a name for this so that we can refer to them. These are the equatorial atoms. They're around the equator of this kind of thing. Um, and these aren't called polar. They're called something else. Ooh, I should know. Oh, well, um, we're going to call them polar. These are definitely actually called equatorial and I'll figure out what the name is for the real one um, later. Maybe I'll stick it on the end of the video. What do you think? I think it's great. Maybe I'll pause. Pause it. The internet informs me that these are axial. Not polar. Yeah, that would be confusing because then it would be a, is it a polar molecule? No, 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 I mean the polar, axial. So equatorial and axial because they're on the axis. Ooh. I know, right? Okay, so you have three equatorial atoms when you're dealing with five and two axial atoms. Um, and the equatorial atoms do that trigonal thing again. So you have 120 degree angles between these three but between an equatorial and an axial, it's 90 degrees. Huh, interesting. So you have two different kind of options here, um, but that's the shape for five. Um, and so that's, um, the, I love the name for this one. This one is, hey, look, um, here, give me my pen back. This one is, all right, you've got that trigonal pyramid thing going on, but you've also got one on the bottom. Dude. So there's two triangular pyramids. And so this is called trigonal bipyramidal. Um, so that one's cool. All right, what if you had a lone pair? Um, and here's the thing. What if you had a lone pair is a really important question for the five guy because is it gonna take an equatorial or an axial dude? Starfish? Equatorial. That's correct. All right, it takes an equatorial dude. The reason being the equatorial dudes are 120 degrees apart and the axial dudes are 90 degrees apart. And a and so since the lone pairs are stronger, they're gonna take the position that has the most room for them. And so an equatorial position provides more space for a lone pair. So he takes one of these equatorial positions um, and you end up with this funky shape here, which looks like a sideways running alien. Anyway. Um, <laughs> 
the way that you should think about it is you have a little thing and you have that. That's a better representation of a seesaw. Dinosaur. And it goes dunk, 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 dunk. Apparently the official name besides seesaw is disphenoidal, which I'm not even sure what sphenoid means. So it's two of them though. Right. <laughs> um, seesaw. It's a seesaw. So, um, and then the next one, what if there were two lone pairs? Then you lose another atom and you lose an equatorial atom. And so um, you have equatorial one and equatorial two. You still got your, both your axials um, and one of your equatorials is left. And this is shaped like a T. A T, but sideways. T, right? Lone pair, lone pair. Um, so this is T shaped. If you do this, right, um, and then well, what if there were three lone pairs? Which actually happens sometimes. I've seen some molecule that does that. If you had three lone pairs, you lose all of your equatorial positions, and you're back to linear. Okay, that's pretty. I know, right? All right, six dudes. You end up with octahedral. So you have your central atom, and um, one up, one down, four around the middle, and these are all equivalent because if you rotate it you still have one up, one down, and four around the middle. So there's no axial versus equatorial here. That's only for the trigonal bipyramidal dudes. Um, all of these are 90 degrees off of each other. Um, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why is it called octa when there's only six dudes? That's silly. It's because it makes eight faces. So there's one, two, three, four triangles here. And the base of it is a square. We'll need that in a minute. And then one, two, three, four. So this is um, eight faces, and that's called an octahedron. So uh, there you are. And all of the angles are 90 degrees. So what if you took away one and you had a lone pair? Well, you take away one of them, and you've got um, one of your pyramids left. But this pyramid has a bottom, which is a square shape, instead of our pyramid that has a um, triangle shape. Uh, triangle shape up here. So this is a square pyramid. So this is square pyramidal with your little lone pair on the butt. Um, and then what if you had another lone pair? Then you end up with the lone pairs being opposing to each other because you wouldn't want them 90 degrees apart if they can be 180 and they can. So you take off the top and the bottom and you end up with just a square. Hey, square. <laughs> um, and there you are, square planar. Ta-da! All right, so that's all of your shapes for Vesper that you really need to know. And there's actually, they get, it gets a little bit crazier. Sometimes you can have more than six around oh. it, when you get totally crazy, but we don't learn about those. But they make neat shapes. All right, <laughs> Vesper. That's Vesper. It makes shapes. You're supposed to know the angles and the names. All right, I need to move this doohickey. All right, hybridization. Um, so we, when we were doing electron configuration way back a while ago, um, you know, we learned 1s2, 2s2, 3s2, 2p6, no, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, anyway, keep going. <laughs> I don't have it all memorized. Come on, I have to look at the periodic table. But, um... An interesting question comes when you think about um, when you think about, for example, the bonding in methane. You've got carbon, and it's bonded to four dudes. Hey, wow, that was pretty good. Um, it's bonded to four dudes, and so what shape will that be? That one. And yeah, it's gone now, so you are cheating, aren't uh -huh. you? Tetrahedron. Is a tetrahedron. So um, actually, if you're being a more careful drawy person, you will have them come out like this and have a little dashy one back there. Um, that's terrible, but sometimes it looks better than that. Um, so you have the tetrahedral shape. Um, and what's interesting is that, you know, the four, the four orbitals that you can use um, for the, the valence orbitals, which are the ones that you would bond with, um, go like this. That's These are the valence ones, 2s2 and 2p6. One. 
come back there we go um are like this and so you have two electrons on a 2s2 and one elect two electrons lonely in the 2p6 and so you're kind of going so what is he doing exactly with his electrons when he's bonding with four hydrogens like he's cramming two of them together or um and also they're all different shapes so like the 2s orbital is spherical and then the 2px is this guy y and z and so what is he doing with his electrons? Like, especially when you consider the fact that they, they were wondering about this and they're like, so does that mean that one of the H's is using the S and so it's like a different length and shape and crap? I don't know. And so what they found actually was they measured the lengths of all of the bonds and they found that all of the bonds are exactly the same length and exactly the same strength. So you're not using one of the S's and three of the P's all right, so um, then the question is, you've got this symmetrical tetrahedral shape, but you're not really sure what it's doing with all of the orbitals. Um, and the answer is, um, right, the answer is on the next box. Do, 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 slide this way. And slide this that way too. There we go. So the question is, what are we doing with the orbitals that's different than what it, we're normally doing with the orbitals when the atoms are by themselves? They're doing something different when they're bonding because you're not dealing with an S and three Ps. Um, so how are they different? Um, they are averaged out versions of the orbitals that you started with. So instead of having one S and three Ps, you've kind of mathematically averaged those shapes so that you have um, four, uh, four orbitals that are all the same shape oriented slightly differently um, that are kind of an average of an S and a P. So you have kind of a sphere-ish part, but it's also kind of like a P because it's a bloop shape. Um, so these end up sort of looking like mushrooms, um, which are, they're kind of cute, right? Um, and if you think about adding all four of those together, they end up making a tetrahedron. You've got one on the Z, you've got one sticking down that way, and one sticking out towards you, and one sticking out that way. Um, so this set of four orbitals, which is what um, methane is using, is called, they're each, they are a an sp3 hybridized orbital. And what they're saying is, it is an average of your three P's and an S. Um, and there are actually several different types of hybridization that give you slightly different shapes. Um, and what you end up with is this chart of things here. Um, if you need to hybridize an S and a P, you end up with two orbitals um, that you can bond with. Um, and the orbitals are sp hybridized, so they're a, they're a mathematical average of a single s and a single p. So they are they are slightly less pe than these guys are. Um, and then when you get to sp twos, that's an average of an s and two p orbitals, and they're uh, a little bit closer. They're they're a little bit more like the p's and a little bit less like the s. And then sp three is a little bit more like the p's. That's these guys up here. Um, and then also if you get really fancy and you need to bond to five or six things, you start throwing D orbitals in there, um, which is pretty cool. So if you need to bond to five things and you have a mixture of a single D and S and three P's, or if you bond to six, you have, uh, two D's and S and three P's. Um, and that's actually the number of effective pairs instead of atoms that you're bonding with. So that includes lone pairs. Um, so let's, let me show you the pictures of them. I have pictures. Um, so here's what um, the atomic, the, the hybridized orbitals uh, for SP look like. You've got the, um, the spherical-y part here and then the little, the little stem-y part here, which um, makes it the average of the S and the P. And then here's the other one. So there's two SP hybridized orbitals and together they would join up this way. Um, and here if you have SP2 hybridized orbitals, that's the sphery part and then the little stemmy part. And you see it's a little bit stemmier yeah. than the, the SPs. 
Um, and there are three of them, and they're oriented 120 degrees apart, which is what we saw in Vesper Theory. Um, and when they're all together, they make a nice little bloop, bloop, and bloop, like that. Um, so that's SP2s, that's what they look like. And then the SP, oop, nope, wrong way. The SP3s, the SP, where'd they go? That's the wrong one. Here, click on this. Yeah, here we go. Um, the SP3s are um, sort of crazy, and these are in space, so you've got, um, in 3D space instead of flat, so they're harder to see. There's one kind of going up this way, one this way, one that way, and one that way. So there's the fat part and the stem and the fat, they all look like mushrooms, the fat part and the stem and the fat part and the stem. And all together they make this crazy blobby thing. <laughs> um, so that's what your, your hybridized orbitals look like. Um, whereas normally your regular orbitals just look like an S or they look like a P or they look like a D. Um, these are the mixy kinds. Oh, we even have, I think they have the D, S, P, 3s. Yeah, they do. Want to see them? Uh -huh. Yes, I want to see them. Um, these are crazy because you remember that was that one crazy D orbital. Uh -huh. um, so there's five of these. There's three around the middle. These are your equatorial uh -huh. ones and here are your axial ones. Um, and... They didn't bother putting them all together because they knew it would just be a big <laughs> smudge. And then here is Whoa. the octahedral one with um, a mixture of two Ds, and so it's got a little bit more of that DE pacifier thing going on. Um, with uh, two, uh, one up and down, and then four around the center like this. Um, and they, again, they didn't smush them together because you wouldn't be able to see it. So there you are. That's what hybridized orbitals look like. Um, and now I'm going to draw pictures. Yay, I love oh pictures. Um, so let's see. Uh, for nitrogen, um, what you've got is this. And so you, you need to be able to do your Lewis structures. You've got a triple bond and lone pairs here. Um, and so the question is, uh, this nitrogen, how many things is it bonded to? Two. Two. One of them is the other nitrogen and the other is his lone pair. Um, and so that's the number of effective pairs. And here's the little trick. The number of effective pairs is the total number of um, superscripts on your hybridization. So there's a secret one and a secret one. So there's two there. <laughs> there's three, so there's two and a, well, there's three. And then four is three and four. 5 is 3, 4, 5, and 6 is 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, so if you just count how many effective pairs it has, that will tell you the type of hybridization without having to go through all the hoo-ha that most people tell you you have to go through. Um, so nitrogen. Nitrogen is bonded to two things, uh, its lone pair and the other nitrogen. And the way it looks is this. Here's the, the nucleus. And the orbitals that we've got are two sp hybridized orbitals. Those take 180 degree spots. And so you end up with, there's one of them, there's the other one, and you gotta make them overlap, you know, that's the bond. There's one of them, and there's the other one. And yeah, they do kind of fill the same space with each other somewhat. Um, so there is your first bond between nitrogens. And here is the lone pair, and here is the lone pair. Um, the and we haven't actually gotten to sigma and pi bonds yet. Um, maybe I'll come back to this. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't explained this. So we'll get we'll get to the double and the triple bonds in a second. So this is just this is just the first bond between nitrogens. All right, and then you've got um, ethene here, and that's going to be with your Lewis structure. like so um, and so you've got to so oop, I'm not a pen anymore here we go um, so here's the nucleus of each of the carbons and if you look the carbon is bonded to a hydrogen a hydrogen and a carbon so it's bonded to three things total um, but it's a double bond that doesn't matter that's only bonded to one thing it's bonded twice yes I know We'll get, to we'll get there. Um, so that means that it's it needs um, for this the first of the bonds it needs uh, a hybridized orbital and then the second one is actually a p orbital. Um, but we'll get there.
Um, it's bonded to three things, and so it's going to be an sp2 hybridized set of orbitals. Those orbitals take 120 degree positions. Um, so you go one of the sp2s, two of the sp2s, three of the sp2s, and you do the same deal. One, and you connect them because they're bonded. Two, that one was sort of rough. Three, um, and then here's the nucleus for the hydrogens. Hey, hydrogens. And each of the hydrogens, since um, it's only got an s orbital to begin with, hybridizes not at all. It's just got an s orbital. So here's the s orbital that bonds across to that sp2 hybridized orbital. That one was big. <laughs> um, and that one was lumpy. Um, and again, we'll get to the double bond in a second. We haven't drawn it in yet. Um, and here we go, CH4. That's carbon, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Um, and so that's going to be, hey, um, that's going to be attached to four things total. So there's going to be a set of sp3 hybridized orbitals, which take the tetrahedral shape of 109.5 degrees. So you go one, two, three, four. I'm sorry, that's terrible. Um, <laughs> And then the hydrogens, there's, they are with their s orbitals. And here we've got PCL5. Why is this one small? <laughs> um, so you've got phosphorus. Um, and notice that phosphorus has got five things attached to it. So one, two, three equatorials and two axials. Um, so this is going to be fun, right? Uh, it's attached to... DSP3 hybridized orbitals, um, which have got the three equatorial positions, one, two, three, and then an up, and a down, that's ugly. Um, and then you've got your chlorines, and folks, I don't want to draw the chlorines because the chlorines are bonded to four things because you've got the lone pairs. Um, so I've got to draw all of my stupid tetrahedral chlorines. Let's draw one. I'll just draw the first one. How about that? Um, so that's one over the one, two, three, and then that one sticks into the paper. You want to see more of those, don't you? One, two, three, four. This is terrible. One. I need a drawing person. Where's Megan? Ha! One, two, three, four. One, two, th three, four, and one, two, three, four. There. Isn't that beautiful? Say yes. Yes. Good job. All right. And then SF6. Oh boy. You've got the sulfur in the middle. I know this one's going to be great. I'm not going to do the Fs this time. It's going to be ridiculous if I try. It was ridiculous when you tried before. <laughs> All right, so this is going to need six or uh, attached to six things, um, which this is an expanded octet, by the way, um, because you can't attach to six things unless you're allowed to have more than eight electrons in your valence, right. um, which sulfur qualifies because he's in the third um, period. And um, so that's a set of six, which is going to be three, four, five, six. So these are D2S1P, no, D2SP3 hybridized orbitals, and that's up down and four around. That's ugly. I know, I know. Draw your dots like you did. Um, and then my, my little dots. Oh yeah. 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 So how you planned it out. Don't tell me I did it better before. I'm great at drawing these things. Okay, next. We're almost done, kids. We're gonna get to the double bondy thing. Slide over, will ya? There. Okay, next. Sigma bonds and pi bonds. So all the bonds that I just drew were the first bonds, the single bonds. Um, those bonds are, as you saw, directly in line between the atoms. So here's the center, um, and here's the center, and here is your your um, hybridized orbital. The sigma bonds are between these nuclei. You can draw a line straight through the center of them. Um, uh, that's your single bonds, and if you have a double bond, it's the first of those two. 
The second and third bonds, if you're dealing with double and triple bonds, um, are slightly behave differently and they look different. Um, they are not made using hybridized orbitals. The second bond and the third bond are made using the extra P's that you left have left over. Um, so, for example, in the nitrogen, if you look at the the electron configuration, um, you've got this is the two S two and this is the two P. Um, you have got five, one, two, three, four, five electrons, but you ended up only using, you made um, sp hybridized orbitals, and so that just used this one and this one. You used two. There are two dudes left over, these orbitals. They're like, hey, we're peas, we're left over, we were not used for hybridization. <laughs> um, and so these are the ones that participate in the, the double bond and then the triple bond. Um, and since they're p orbitals, they stick up. Um, so, for example, um, in the C2H4, which I'll draw bigger, the C2H4, which we drew here, what you have is this darn thing again. No. So, for the C2H4, you've got your nucleus and your nucleus and it's um, sp2 hybridized, so you have a set of 120 degree orbitals. Alright, so that's your sigma bond. You can see that it's directly between the two nuclei. Um, but what you end up with, because this is your electron configuration for carbon, um, and you're using only three of them you're, uh, to hybridize. You're using the S and two of the P's. This P is left over, and so you have a P orbital, and that's what participates in the second bond. So the P orbital um, is a P orbital, so it sticks up. It's a nice big P orbital. P orbital. Um, and that's the bond. That, that's, those are the orbitals that bond for the double bond. And um, your pi bond they, these two pieces connect and these two pieces connect over and they kind of smooge and the electrons can be all in here. Um, the pi bond looks like it's doubled. You're like, that's two connections. It's not. Because what it is is just these guys are overlapped and they're hourglass shaped and because they're hourglass shaped it looks like it's W. w. But this is, that, that's a, a bond. That right there is one bond. Um, the, with two apparent pieces. So the first bond, which is the sigma bond, is hey, is that one. And the second bond, which is the pi bond, is this one between the p orbitals that were left over that didn't get hybridized. Um, and a really nice picture of this <laughs> is here. So this is the um, the ethene, the double bonded dude. So the carbon and the the sp2 hybrid orbitals. They're not showing the second part of it, the the stem of the little mushroom. They're just showing the cap. So that's where the overlap is um, for the single bond that's in between the two C's. That's your sigma bond. Um, and actually, here are some more sigma bonds between the hydrogen and the carbons. So sigma, 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 sigma. Um, and then your p orbitals off of those carbons, they're showing it separately because it's kind of ridiculous to draw it all together as you saw. The p orbitals here um, connect across like this um, and that's a pi bond. Um, so a single pi bond is all this purpleness and it's all combined here in part C. So that's much prettier than mine, don't you think? <laughs> um, yes, yes. That's the only reason that it's better. <laughs> Um, and then the last one, you've got um, nitrogen and I can draw him bigger as well. So, what? I can't. <laughs> um, so nitrogen is sp hybridized and so you end up with um, a set of two orbitals. They're, they're connected, okay. Um, there's your sigma bond. Um, here's your lone pairs. Um, and what you end up with having is those two extra p orbitals. So you have, and in fact, I'm going to change colors.
Whoa. I know, right? Fancy, so fancy. Um, so the P orbitals are going to be blue here. You've got these blue P orbitals, and they'll connect across for your second bond. And then I'm going to do another color. Yeah. Yep. And then the the other P orbitals are perpendicular to them. And they bond with each other. Pew, 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 pew. Um, so you end up with one bond in the middle between the nuclei and the pi bonds being sticking up perpendicular out of them. Um, and so that's what gives you this. So that's what it actually more looks like in 3D space than this. Isn't that nice? That's complicated. I know, right? Um, and... Now it is time for you to go and do the questions. So meet me on the black screen when you have them done. Alright, here we have got several of the molecules that we actually did on page two of the notes, but now we're predicting the shape um, and some other things. Um, so here we go. We got to do the structure and the angles and whether it's polar or nonpolar. So we have hydrogen bonded to carbon, bonded to nitrogen, and if you remember it's like this. And so the question is what shape is that um, around the carbon? So we have carbon that's bonded to two things. Um, did I make you guys do the hybridization? How about that? I should have. Let's do the hybridization. So the hybridization on this carbon atom, it's connected to two things, and so it's using sp hybridized orbitals to do this bond and this first bond. The other two bonds are made by p orbitals, um, and the shape is going to be, since it's connected to two things, it's going to be linear and the angle is going to be 180 degrees, and indeed it will be polar because this will be the negative end and this will be the positive end. I think that's everything. Yeah. All right, pH 3, you've got P, which is um, connected to a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a lone pair. Um, if you remember your Lewis structure from page 2, because he's got 5 and 3, so 2, 4, 6, 8. Um, that's going to uh, be in the family of the tetrahedron, but with one lone pair. That's the trigonal pyramidal shape. So trigonal pyramidal. The angles are going to be approximately 109.5, but slightly less. Um, and that's going to be polar. And the hybridization is going to be sp3 because phosphorus is connected to one, two, three, four things. CHCl3. This is how you draw the tetrahedron in 2D. That still looks terrible. Um, <laughs> this is tetrahedral. CHCl3. Oh, hey, those are Cs. Did you know? Thank you, assistant. Tetrahedral, the angles are 109.5. It is indeed polar because you've got all these dots on the chlorines. Um, so this side is negative and this side is positive. Um, and what else do we want? This sp3 hybridized because carbon's connected to four things. All right, NH4 plus. You've got um, N and the H's, and that's going to be in a set of brackets because you have to draw the little plus for it to be an ion, so that's the ammonium ion. Um, again, it's connected to four things, that's tetrahedral. That's going to be nonpolar because it's all the same all the way around. So even though the bonds between each N and H are polar bonds because N is pulling the electrons towards the center, the outside of this molecule is all symmetrical. So it's a nonpolar molecule with polar bonds. Um, the angles are 109.5 degrees and we're sp3 hybridized. Um, H2CO is kind of fun. Carbon bonded to oxygen. Two, four, six, eight. 
Um, and this is carbon bonded to three things total. So that's going to be a um, trigonal planar. And that's 120 degree angles. The hybridization is um, S P2 because it's connected to one, two, three things, but it's connected twice. We don't care. That's from P orbitals, so we ignore them. Um, and what else? It's polar. It's totally polar. See how polar that is? That's not symmetrical at all. Look at all those electrons on one side. Um, the selenium difluoride is selenium with fluorines. Um, and the selenium has got how many lone pairs? Two lone pairs. Um, so boom, 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 boom. So that's actually going to end up being a bent molecule. Um, these, these are the ones that we had to do the Lewis structures oh. for on the previous page, which is why I'm not belaboring the Lewis structures. Um, and so that's the, that is a bent molecule um, with angles of less than 109.5 because those lone pairs are pushing harder down on these two bonds to the fluorines. Um, that's going to be way polar. <laughs> Um, with kind of an exclamation point there, and the hybridization is sp3 because selenium is connected to one, two, three, four. One thing to notice is that if you don't know how many lone pairs something has, you will not get the hybridization correct. Um, so if I had forgotten that selenium had two lone pairs, I would have said that it was sp hybridized. It's not right. All right. Um, this O3 Ooh. is ozone. Um, which is another form of oxygen that you don't, um, that is not the standard form of oxygen. It's not the most stable form of oxygen. Um, and what you end up with is O, 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 um, O. Uh, <laughs> and that's 18 um, electrons. So you've got at least one bond, one, two. Um, and they've got at least a lone pair, two, four, six. I've got at least two lone pairs, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, um, 14, 16, 18, I believe. Um, so you end up with a bent molecule. Um, so you end up with two lone pairs, two, four, oh no, just one lone pair. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, oh, near 18, yeah, that's not there. Uh, that should be black. Yeah, that's not there. Okay, so you have one lone pair, black. there we go, on the central, um, I think it's still white. Yeah, you have one lone pair on the central oxygen and um, a double bond on one of the oxygens. And if you remember from our discussion of residence, um, the double bond could well be on the leftmost oxygen um, so it could be like this, um, which means that because these two structures are equivalent and are both possible, you end up with something like a one and a half bond um, instead of a single, a one single bond and one double bond. So this is the, this is drawn. Um, actually, it's drawn bent um, with the oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. And they draw the one and a half bond like dashy like that, um, with a lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair. Okay, um, so that's your oxygen, and you end up with an angle here, um, which is less than 109.5, no, less than 120, um, because you've it's a single lone pair, so one, two, three things on the oxygen. The hybridization on that central oxygen is sp2, um, and it is polar. All right. And what's the sheet? Oh, bent. Yeah, it's bent. Thank you. All right, boron trifluoride. If you remember um, our discussion of non-octet kind of dudes, boron is someone that can do that. So your structure for boron trifluoride is boron, boron da, da, fluorine, 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 dot, 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 yeah, I know. Those look terrible. Shh. Um, and so that's boron bonded to three things. Um, it doesn't have an octet, but it's sort of happy with that. 
Um, so you end up with the shape of trigonal planar, 120 degree angles, sp2 hybridized, and nonpolar. All right, SF6, S, and then one, two, three, four. I'm not drawing the dots around the Fs. There are six dots around each F. Um, so that's um, octahedral. The S is D2SP3 hybridized because it's connected to one, two, three, four, five, six things. Um, it is nonpolar and the angles are all 90 degrees. Um, ICL4, um, I know, right? Did I do that one on the other page? No, I need to do this one. This one is cool. Um, ICL4, need to slide this over so I have more space for ICL4. Um, you've got iodine in the center. Um, and when you have a halogen in the center, you're typically going to violate, you frequently end up violating your um, octet rule. Um, not when it's fluorine, though. Fluorine can't do that. Um, because it's not in the mm -hmm. third, it's not in the third period. Mm -hmm. um, iodine connected to four chlorines. Um, but iodine has got seven and chlorine has got seven, so it's 28 plus um, seven is some number, right? 35. 35. Um, so that's iodine and four chlorines, two, three, four. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Um, is this an ion? I think it's an ion. Yeah, hey, that's how supposed to be ICL4 minus. Sorry you couldn't do this one. <laughs> I was like, odd number molecules are really weird. Um, this is 36. Aha, there you, we go. Yeah, not 35. Um, so in fact, what we have is 32, um, 30, 36. So that's iodine with four chlorines and two lone pairs, which the shape that that matches is octahedral with two lone pairs, um, which is called... Do you remember? No. It's square planar. You skipped PCL5. That's a really good point. I sure did. Square planar. Um, the angles are going to be 90 degrees, and it is nonpolar. Um, because the lone pairs are on opposite sides of each other, so it's negative on both sides. Um, and the hybridization is D2SP3. And we're just going to drag this over here so we have space for PCL5. Um, hey, there's my face over on the other side now. Um, all right, PCL5, there's a P. One, two, three, four, five. You've got the equatorial and axial positions. Um, I'm not drawing the dots on the chlorines, okay? Okay. Um, and what you end up with is this is trigonal bipyramidal. The angles are 120s and 90s because um, you get the 120s here in the center and 90s up to the axials. Um, that's nonpolar and the hybridization is DSP3. Yay! All right. And the end, we're doing more of the same, pretty much. Yeah, I made you do hybridized on number two. I should have done that on number one. Shame on me. All right, CF4, CCF, CF. Again, you've got dots. That's tetrahedral. Tetrahedral, um, and that's 109.5 degrees. That's sp3, and they're all sigma bonds, and it is nonpolar. Uh, and here we've got this one. Five. Um, that's arsenic. It's uh, got five. So fluorine, 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 fluorine. I'm not drawing the lone pairs on fluorines. They've all got three lone pairs. Um, so that's going to be trigonal bipyramidal. 
Um, the angles are 120s and 90s. The hybridization is DSP3. The are all sigma bonds and it is nonpolar. Uh, iodine trifluoride is fun. Um, that's 7 and that's 7 times 3, so 7 times 4 is 28. So you end up doing fluorines around the edge. So dot 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 so we've accounted for three eight times three we've accounted for twenty four we have four more so that's going to be two lone pairs on that iodine so that's um based off of the five family the trigonal bipyramidal but minus two um atoms and with two lone pairs so this is going to be um T shaped T shaped T shaped this is going to be T shaped I was like, is it seesaw? No, that's when you're minus one. Mm -hmm. This is T-shaped and your angles are, you've got 180 between two of the fluorines and 90s between the other twos. Um, 180 and 90 and it's pretty dang polar. <laughs> and what's our hybridization is DSP3. And here we have beryllium dihydride beryllium is another one that can be um, a low electron molecule because um, he's got two and he's got two so one two three four that's linear that one's easy 180 <laughs> degrees and nonpolar and s p oh and they're all sigma bonds thank you do i have any pi bonds yet i don't maybe i will just wait for it all right, C2H2, we've got carbon, bonded to carbon, bonded to H's. Hey, we do, look, one, two, three. Um, that's going to be linear, 180 degrees, um, SP hybridized. This is a sigma bond, sigma bond, sigma bond, and then two pi bonds, and it is nonpolar. Woo. And then this dude again. Did we already do him? We did him up here. We did him up there. Did we do all? We didn't do the pi bond part, did we? Um, um, here is carbon, which is sp hybridized, 180 degrees linear. And here's a sigma, a sigma, two pi's, and I think that's it. Nope, polar. Wee. There you go. Thanks, folks. Ooh, that one was long.